are you ready to start understanding geometry nodes a little bit? I don't promise that you'll be a master, but after this lesson, you might be able to start looking at geometry nodes and instead of seeing this big spaghetti pile of this weird node-like stuff to understand what's going on. A lot of people look at this stuff and they're like, nope, I'm done. I'm not doing geometry. I will never master that. But I have a node today that's simple, that demonstrates what geometry nodes can really do, and that you can follow along with and maybe actually use in some of your projects. So let's jump in and take a look at that. Now, to begin with, let, here's, here's an example. Let's say that I've got this Suzanne here, and I've made my Suzanne here uh, with a, a fuzzy skin on it. But let's say that I want to put my brand across here with 3DP Professor, right? The problem is I don't want it to be just like flat on there. I want it to kind of follow the curves of the shape, and if possible, to kind of take the the texturing of the shape with it. Well, in the past, here's how we do that. I would select the text and make sure that it was a mesh object. I would add a Boolean modifier to it, and I would intersect it with the shape that I wanted it to follow. Now, it has kind of the texture of the monkey on it, but the problem is, if I go into toggle x-ray view here, and I I want to, it to move up. I want it to be embossed on there. I move it, and it doesn't work. Well, that's because the modifier is modifying it live as we go. And, yeah, that's just not going to happen. So what do we do? Well, in the past, we would have to apply the modifier. But this means that if I made this shape with any modifiers in it, they're gone. They have to be baked in for this to work. But now I can move it out. And we can see that we've got like the embossing on there just a little bit, maybe a bit much there, but there we go. We've got a subtle embossing with the name on it. And now we could take this and we could modify Boolean union it back into the head. And there we go. We got our embossing on there and that's fine. That's the way that we would do this in the past. But like I said, this is kind of destructive modeling and I would rather be able to do it non-destructively. If I don't have to apply modifiers, I consider that a win. But we can't move it. If we move it, then it changes the shape of it. Well, let's follow along. Let's use some uh, geometry nodes to do this. So start with a new scene, everything cleared out. And let's just add in, oh, let's add in a UV sphere here. And I'm gonna scale it up by a factor of 10. And then I'm gonna move it up above because I always like to have my stuff above the build plate here. Then I'm going to add in a cube, and I'm going to take the cube, move it kind of to the edge here, and rotate it a little bit. And I'm going to scale it up by ooh, four or so. And we'll pretend that we want to have this cube shape embossed out here. So what do we do to start with? I'm going to move it into the circle just a little bit more. But to start, we start exactly the same as we would with the previous example, we select the cube, we add a Boolean modifier to it, and we intersect it with the sphere, but we can't move it and we don't want to apply the modifier. So this is where geometry nodes comes in. It allows us to move it without moving it. Check this out. Now, to begin with, where do we tackle our geometry nodes? Well, there is a geometry nodes tab. Now this geometry nodes tab, it's got, it's got this window up here, this evaluated window. I'm really not sure what this is or what it's for. And I'm sure if I understood it, it would be useful. If you want to use this tab, this window to do this, that's fine. But keep in mind this 3d view over here, we haven't modified the way that we've modified the 3d view in our main tab. So when I set up Blender, this one right here, it doesn't have all the scale factors and stuff. So we'd have to go back through and we'd have to fix the scale factor and we'd have to fix the colors. For now, I'm not going to use this. Again, you've got it. You can use it in the future if you want, but I'm going to do this from the main window. What I'm going to do, the reason why I keep this main tab 
is because it's got this 3D panel down here. This, this, I'm sorry, this animation panel down here. If I take and make it bigger, I've got two panels, one on top and one below. And I can take that second one, click on the uh, identification thingy in the upper left hand corner, what it is, and I can change it to geometry nodes. So it's right here by my ear, geometry nodes. And now this is a geometry node editor space. And I've got this in the main view. And when I'm done, I can just hide this away. That's why I like to keep this in. This is the way I like to work. You don't have to work this way. You've got the other tab, but I wanted to show this to you. Now, I need to add a geometry node tree modifier to this cube. And there's two ways that we could do this. Now, I'm going to do it the way that will give you understanding, and then I'll show you the other way. So here's the way that, that we give some understanding here. It's a modifier. So add a modifier, and it's a geometry nodes modifier. Then in that geometry nodes modifier over here, you create a new geometry nodes space. And right here, we've got that geometry nodes space. The other way that this could happen, if I delete that modifier, get rid of it. Notice there's a new button in the geometry nodes editor. If I just hit it, it automatically creates the modifier for me and then creates a new modifier space. So when you click that new button, you might think, oh, it's just adding geometry nodes to the object. No, it's adding a geometry nodes modifier and then creating a space for it. So there you go. Now we can name this geometry node space and I'm going to name it the transform uh, modifier because that's what this is going to be. This is going to be the transform modifier. Okay. I'm going to hide my own view up here so you don't see me, so I'm not in the way. Now, this geometry node space, if you're not used to working with um, 3D space or 2D spaces in Blender, it's a lot the same as the 3D space. You have to hold down shift in the middle mouse button to pan things around, but you can hit the home button to zoom in on everything. You can zoom in and zoom out and you can, well, you can't rotate the view. Obviously that won't work but it's all pretty much the same hotkeys to help you move things around. Now, our geometry node right now has an input that is the geometry of our cube, which is just this, and an output that is the geometry of our cube. But we want to modify the geometry. Now, in the 3D view here, or not in the 3D view, in the geometry view here, you can hit Shift A, and we pull up a menu that has all kinds of nodes that we can add to this right here you're probably feeling overwhelmed look at all these different i don't know what they all do and guess what you don't have to now i love that this organizes them in nice neat little groups but we want something in the geometry group that's called the transform node so under geometry choose transform and notice now we've got a new node we can move it around the space and we can click and drop it but if we drop it between these two if we drop it more or less on the line it automatically inserts itself so what it does here is now our geometry is going into this transform node being transformed by it and coming back out now I'm going to switch my view here back to the view where we can see the whole thing and what I want to do is I want to transform my my cube here move it up in the Z so I'm going to go one in the Z you might have noticed that this automatically put it out in the right direction because it's working with the local coordinates of this shape. And we rotated this shape, or I rotated this shape, to put it out here. So if I hit 2 into Z, notice it's kind of going sideways because it's going along the object's Z, which is currently rotated. So that's what we wanted. We want to move it out one, and we are done. We pretty much have that embossing. I will mention, though, that if at this point, I'm going to make my geometry nodes a little smaller. If at this point I select the sphere and try to add a Boolean modifier to it and union that to our shape here, because that's kind of what we want to do, we will have a circular dependency because we will modify the shape of this, but the shape of the cube depends on the shape of the sphere. So now we've modified the shape of the sphere 
So now the Boolean modifier for the cube is going to try and do with the new shape of the sphere, which is going to modify the shape of the sphere because of the Boolean modifier on it. So this creates what's called a circular dependency, having one object that defines the shape of the other object, and then using that object to define the shape of the first object is bad. What we would have to do instead, instead of adding a modifier to the sphere, we would have to shift a, a single vert object origin only. This creates an empty object in edit mode, hit tab to exit edit mode and add a Boolean modifier union in the sphere and then add a Boolean modifier and union in the cube. And so we end up with a third object here. Well, union it. <laughs> we end up with third object here that kind of combines them all, but that way we avoid the circular dependency. And I'm just going to hide all those. This I'm going to call our final object. But we're not going to worry about it very much right now. We're going to leave it where it is for now. Because I'm going to pull back up the geometry nodes. We're not done with this geometry nodes. But I hope that you can see how useful this transform node is. However, this transform node only moves it up one in the Z. What if we wanted a transform node that we could move it any way that we wanted, that we could that we could input into the geometry nodes, what we wanted, we could have something that we could use in all kinds of circumstances. I'll give you an example. I could move this over five in the, in the X or you know, five in the Y, five in the X. We could move it around and maybe I want to have that level of control. Well, here's how we do this. On the side panel of the geometry nodes, and if you can't see it, N opens it up just like it does the side panel into 3D view. If we go to... Uh, it's not node, it's group. There's an inputs group and we can hit plus and create an input. And we're going to make this input, we're going to call this input X and then we'll create a new input and call it Y. And we're going to create a new input and call it Z. And the goal is to have these inputs map to the X, Y, and Z here. But you might notice something. Uh, I'm going to move my transform node a little bit over so we got some space. But if I try to take the X and connect it to the X, it doesn't connect. There's no nothing to connect to. Instead, there's just this blue node here. And if I try to connect it, well, okay, at this point, we've got X, Y, and Z here. And so I could put this to one. It's moving one in the X, Y, and Z. And if I try to do it with the Y, it breaks the connection with the X. What we got to do is combine X, Y, and Z into one vector and then plug that vector into the translation. It's not that complicated. All we have to do is hit Shift A and add a new node. This new node is under vector and it's combine X, Y, Z. Drop it between the input and the transform. Take the X to the X, the Y to the Y, the Z to the Z, and then the output of that to the translation node. And now we can control it directly from our modifier panel over here. So I want it to move one into Z. Maybe I want it to move two into Z. So now we've got a node that we can change the inputs to. And I like to take this combine X, Y, Z and make it smaller just to kind of neaten things up. But now we've got something that's, well, actually pretty useful. We can now modify the location of our shape without modifying the shape. Now we could do the same thing for scaling. Let's say that we want to be able to make this bigger or smaller based on inputs. Well, just got to create new inputs. So we create a, I'm going to call this S of X and then create a new input and call it S of Y and then create a new input and call it S of Z. And just like before, in fact, you know what I can do? I can click on the combine X, Y, Z, hit shift D to duplicate it combine my X, Y, and Z, and then put them into the scale factor. And whoa, whoa, my object disappeared. Yes, it disappeared because notice that the inputs for X, Y, and Z are now zero. So it scaled them all by zero. Well, that's not what I wanted. What we can do is 
in our SX, SY, and SZ, change the default factor to 1. And we can set the min and the max on this one. Well, the min can be 0, and the max, well, we'll leave the max where it's at. But that way we won't scale things down. So do that again. Make the default 1 and the min 0. Make the default 1 and the min 0. But in our inputs, it's still a 0 because that's what it's set to because we hadn't set this before, but the next time we reuse this, it'll be useful. Just set them all to one, one, one. But actually, what I want to do is I want this to, uh, maybe instead of moving in the Z, zero, I'm going to scale it by 1.2 in the Z. And maybe I'll scale it by 1.5. Now keep in mind, it's scaling around the origin point. The origin point's kind of below the surface here, so it's it's a little bit unusual. My X maybe will be 1.5, 1.2. We can play with it. But there you go. Now we've got that X, Y, and Z. Now you might think, well, what about rotation? Maybe we could make a rotation for X, Y, and Z. And we can absolutely do that. But the reason why I'm not going to do this today is because these rotations are in radians and we would have to do a conversion and uh, I think that this is useful enough as it is right now. But maybe if you all want to know more about that, I can talk about that in a future video, how we can do that conversion. But for now, do you see how simple and powerful this transform node is? And in fact, we've made it so that it's also usable in many cases that we we might end up using this in another project because we can just change the inputs in fact at this point we can close down our geometry nodes we don't need it because we've got our transform over here so let's just really quickly i'm going to add a mesh suzanne in here okay and i'm going to move her over in the x scale her up maybe five times and move her up a little bit and i'm going to Add a geometry nodes and use our transform on her. And I'm going to move her up five in the Z. Nah, 10, 20, 20 in the Z. And I'm going to scale her up by a factor of two in all directions. Now, if I go into edit mode, notice this is where Suzanne really is. This is a transformed Suzanne. And I didn't have to you know, go through all that mess of making that geometry node, I'm able to reuse it. In fact, you can import this across different programs. You can reuse this transform node in the future. And you made it yourself. Look how simple this transform node is. And yet it's geometry nodes. You did it. You figured out how to make geometry nodes work. I mean, you're a genius. This was really, really cool. And something that I feel it figuring this out was the key for me to understand geometry nodes and get kind of the idea and get brave enough to want to experiment with it. So I hope that this helps with you. And I hope that maybe after all of this, you're like, well, maybe geometry nodes aren't that scary. And maybe I could try doing something cool with them because I've got some cool things to show you with geometry nodes, but we'll do that in a future video. For now, I want to thank you very much for watching. I hope that this has helped you. And remember, you are a child of God and you're special to me. So take care of yourself. And if you can, someone else too. I'll see you next time.